Okay. So how you feel today, Kent? I'm great. Again. Oh, yeah. it could be out sledding. Yeah, it's out I'm sledding. Right now. Yeah. How many inches do you think we got? I don't know. Looking at your, six or seven, maybe. I haven't been out in a while, but yeah, there's probably there was three or four when I came in. It looks like there's at least another couple of inches. Right. So five, six, seven. Is it still snowing? I can't. It doesn't look like it. It was. But there's another storm coming in. So. Oh yeah, it's still snowing. It is still snowing. I think it's going to keep snowing. I think so. So everybody's been doing the frozen water, the boiling water, the snow trick. Paul did it last night. Mm -hmm. well, we'll do it this evening just for the fun of it. Heck yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, we have an interesting week this week. Lots of things happening. It's including Snowmageddon. Yep. So today's the 15th. I wonder what our audience knows what day this is, what special day this is. It's the day after Valentine's Day and the day you're in a doghouse if you got to say something to your wife. <laughs> yep. 15th. Is it? You mean you actually get uh, out of the sometimes? So sometimes is it Galileo's birthday? What is today? It is Galileo's birthday today. That's right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, born in fifteen sixty four. Yeah. He'd be a crusty old man today. <laughs> Very crusty. <laughs> yes, he would. Wise beyond his years. Which would be hard to be for Galileo, <laughs> who was wise. We we're making a nine inch mat. <laughs> Say again. Ken says this a is nine inch. We announced we're making a nine inch maxi top. 
No. Yeah, nine inch focal length. Nine inch focal length. <laughs> nine inch aperture, nine inch focal length. It's an F1. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be actually by F. That would be F. It would be F1, wouldn't it? Yep. Wow, look at this. I think we could call it. So this I, is the crater, crater that we're showing here. That's very cool. Nice vision. I'm walking around. Well, hello everybody. This is Scott Roberts and Kent Martz here today, and it's the 21st episode of First Light Chronicles. And uh, today, um, today Kent is going to show us a couple of things that are, are new um, in stock and uh, um, might uh, uh, make your astronomy a little easier. What do you got, Kent? Okay, well, we've talked about the uh two room observatory tent before and this is it right here comes in a nice box uh, we've seen pictures of it scott you've run a video before nice yeah. lightweight uh you know it's it's probably weighs i don't know 30 pounds maybe but uh i'm not going to open this up we've can we've seen this before but this is uh on the website now sit it's not sit. gonna stay up now <laughs> sit stay i got an idea how about if you set it down? <laughs> That's right. There we go. Mm -hmm. I can fix problems sometimes. Anyway, right. it's a two-room observatory tent. It's on the website right now. If you'll go to the search bar and just put in observatory tent, it'll pop up $249.99. Um, yeah. And back in, I think, November, we had this on sale for Explorer Alliance members at a pretty good price. Yes. Now, this is the first time ever seen in public outside of this building or at the factory, our new backpack. And yes, Explore Scientific is getting into backpacking. Why don't you put uh, it on the white part of the lifestyle? It'd be a little easier to see it. Let's try that. There you go. That's better. How about that? That's better. Is it framed up good still? So, yep. man, this felt awful heavy, Scott. Is there something in it? I wonder if there's something inside of it. Maybe something Maybe inside some of it. Bricks or something? Oh, oh, well, look at that. Oh, does it come with one of those? Do you, is that free? With if you buy it, if you buy it, look at this, <laughs> a 102. Now, I have to take the focuser off to get this in oh, here. Oh, yeah, okay. But a That's 102, 102. It's inside of this backpack. Very nice. Just like that. And see if I can keep from dropping the telescope. Yep. Got the focuser in the diagonal right here. Room for eyepieces, all sorts of other kitsch. I'm gonna close it up. Right. It's got standard yeah. zippers on it. Nice. Hey, Kent, and, uh, we've got a question from the audience here. They want to know when our next shipment of mounts will be coming in. Late summer. Late summer. Yeah. Would love to be able to tell you something different, but late summer is the answer. Yeah. Um, Put a tripod right here or anything else you want to put. It's got great shoulder straps on it. We went through about four iterations of this mm -hmm. uh, before we settled on the final design. This thing is really sturdy built. Um, I look forward to being able to use it uh, on on some backpacking trips, some hiking oh, yeah. trips. We've talked about going well, anything a couple of places out. Carry your stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm looking forward to to put an Exos 100 in it and uh, uh, going out, you know, to like uh, Whitaker Point, Hawksville Crag out in Buffalo, out in the, the National Forest along the Buffalo National uh -huh. River, things like that. It'll be really good for, for, you know, some short backpacking trips. And, you know, I wouldn't want to try and overnight out of it necessarily, but whoever goes with me can carry my spare clothes in the tent and stuff like that. <laughs> so uh, this, this is going to retail for $99.99. Ninety nine, ninety nine, and we'll uh, probably yep. offer a, a special deal to Explore Alliance members as well. So, yep, 
I will yep. be announcing that probably tomorrow to paid Explore Alliance members. Uh, the price will be seventy nine ninety nine, which will be you know twenty uh, percent off. Uh, so you get twenty dollars off you if you're a paid today. You just did. Alliance member, <laughs> sir. So you just announced it. So um... oh well, I guess it's uh, <laughs> well. It'll so, be emailed out to the membership tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna email that out, you know, if if to uh, the membership, and so you know, for a week or two, they'll have the ability to uh, get in on that special deal, and uh, it'll be shipped direct. Now, we do have a number of people who have purchased the uh, two two room observatory. I yeah. was gonna start trying to fill those orders today, but we've got six or seven inches of snow, and it's minus one degree in the warehouse right now. And everybody's gone home because you know we're in the south and well, yeah, we they can't couldn't get to the, the equipment. Uh, they couldn't even get yeah. to work. We so. only had like we only had like five people in the building this morning, and uh, you know uh, FedEx and UPS are not running. Uh, I doubt if they run tomorrow, and I would be surprised if they run Wednesday at this point, except for you know very critical shipments. So uh, I'll be getting these uh, processed, the observatories processed, and they'll probably ship out next week everybody who's pre-ordered so right. um again those are 249.99 regular price on the website the backpack without a 102 inside of it is it will be a uh, retail for 99.99 with an sure. introductory paid explore scientific explore alliance membership uh for uh 79.99 if you haven't gotten an explore alliance membership it's really easy Go to explorescientificusa.com. Along the tab bars, go up to the far right. It says Alliance, I think. Yeah. Uh, here, click I'll on Alliance. The, I'll find the web page yeah. for them. Yep. Put a, and just go down to it. Now, we have, um, there's two levels now. There's the Legacy Membership and the Platinum Membership. Uh, we've done away with the uh, Standard Membership. It was um, not very popular. It was either legacy or vast majority or legacy or 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 uh, platinum membership and so we decided to streamline operations and just go with that now if all those people that are platinum or standard membership those are still functional up until your expiration date and uh be sure to get those renewed and we need to be sending out some renewal renewal notices to people as well um just to That's you know right. so th this to... is the page right here i'm sharing with them yeah. and uh uh, it's Explore Scientific USA. You'll see um, uh, Explore Alliance memberships. And uh, uh, you can, if you want just a free membership, you can choose Legacy. It costs absolutely zero dollars. Um, and you do well, get- Scott. The, what's that? Scott. Scott, Platinum basically costs zero dollars too. Well, that's very because, true. That's very true. Yeah. I was getting to that. You, you, <laughs> oh, okay. That, all right. But, all right. But, uh, you know, and you just, you, you can pick the platinum uh, as well. In fact, you make one penny more back, okay, with the that's platinum true. membership because you get a $100 gift card. So, so that's, that's great. And if you're buying anything from Explore Scientific that costs more than $100, uh, you know, goodness, you want to you wanna get, uh, you know, get on that deal and, because you get so many um, great uh, uh, benefits. And one of them uh, is uh, things like, um, uh, you know, first dibs at new product at a discount. So, um, and you can redeem that either through us directly, or you can redeem it through your favorite dealer, uh, you know, here in the United States. So, um, you know, th so that's, that's the deal. Uh, and so effectively, as I say, effectively, if you buy, Explore Alliance Platinum membership for $100 yeah. and then buy this. You can apply that $100 gift card to this for $80 and you'll still have $20 left over. You have $20 spend, left uh, over. On, on an eyepiece <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Sure. So the heck of a deal. Yeah. Heck of a deal. I and recommend it, you buy the, you get, the backpack and the eyepiece or something. So, right? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And with it, you get advanced replacement on products if we have them in stock, uh, all sorts of other benefits as well. So, you know, check it out. Um, it's definitely worth worthwhile. Even without all the other benefits, 
hundred dollars, you get the hundred dollars back to, to buy stuff you're going to buy anyway. I mean, that's right. a heck of a deal right there. Okay. So w- why don't you pull up a chair, Kent, and uh, we'll talk about other things that you can do that makes um, your amateur astronomy easier or more enjoyable. Oh. There you go. Sit down. That's right. You can you sit. can stop you can stop selling now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. so, you can sit down. Yeah. Yeah. So so, so what do you, know, you I, bring? You know, I I know what I bring. If I go to a you know if I go to a star party, um, you know I always I, I like to bring uh, uh, my own uh, uh, chairs. You know I like I, there's a couple of chairs I like to use. One of them is called a zero gravity chair, which allows you to recline. Um, and I always bring a pair of binoculars with me. So I'll have my telescope or telescopes. I'll have my binoculars and a zero gravity chair. And this allows me just to recline and unwind. Okay. Because that, that's, this is a very important part mm-hmm. of amateur astronomy is reducing your stress. You know, uh, you know, I, I suffer from a little bit of high blood pressure. So this, this lowers my blood pressure. Okay. Uh, it allows me to kind of commune with nature. I'm breathing in the fresh night air, you know, and uh, I'm looking up at the sky in a very comfortable position. Uh, and I've got my binoculars out, but without the binoculars, I'm looking for meteors streaking across the sky, trying to get my bearings on uh, which constellations are up, you know, making out the Milky Way, maybe making out some faint deep sky objects by naked eye even, you know. Um, right, right. What do, you, what do you typically like to bring to it? Uh, obviously chairs. I have a roll-up camp table that I bought years and years ago at a big box retailer. Yeah. It has uh, you can it rolls up into a package about that big and that long, and has the the legs in it, and they screw in. That thing is is vastly handy. Uh, in the summertime, I have a uh, I bought it at a star party. I may have bought it at the winter star party. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I um. A, it's wax cardboard with some metal rods in it that allows you to fold up and create a dew shield that goes over that table. And it mm-hmm. fits perfect over that table. So everything under that table doesn't get dew all over it and turn all soggy and soppy. Right. Um, I always, I always in my cut truck have uh, spare coats and, and uh, you Good know, idea. a pair of rain pants. You never know when it's going to get cold. It's true. Uh, even in the summertime, there's always somebody who's cold. And I like being that guy who goes, hang on, I got a coat. Go give him a coat. Um, you know, and, and they've, and generally I get them back. That's the best part. Um, uh, you know, uh, always a warm beverage or a cold beverage. This time of year, you know, drinking. This in time the of year time is definitely is a warm beverage. <laughs> yeah, but, right. you know, just drinking water, you know, because it's easy to get dehydrated in this weather, cold like this. And, you know, on those brutal cold nights, you got to go out hydrated. Um, mm-hmm. but cold beverage in the summertime, um, uh, but it's I have a thermos right now. That, so what, what do you do to keep yourself warm besides jackets? Um, I, uh, love to be in the outdoors and I have, uh, well prepared for cold weather. Uh, I've been hunting as low as four degrees, Ooh. uh, for ducks mm-hmm. and probably lower than that potentially for deer. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, set setting still is is the enemy of of getting warm. Uh, that's the downside to it. So you try and move around a little bit, but overdress for the weather. You know, if you think it's going to be thirty degrees and you'll be fine with this, you know, certain whatever, mm-hmm. wear more because you can always take it off. Um, right. Well, they also you know, have things um, like electric socks, and I a lot of my yeah. friends love the electric yep. socks. You know, you can buy them. That I've uh, never used them. You never used them, huh? The, we have a couple. Never used them. We have a couple of ladies back in the back that uh, have uh, that we ordered them um, uh, a, a battery powered or rechargeable vests because oh. you know when it was back down to the thirties and they were turning they were getting brutally cold. Yeah. And uh, they got them a couple of vests to wear a rechargeable. I think it pl- plugs into a USB port and recharges. Uh, right. And they love those things. Uh, but you know layers and layers. One thing that that critical. I think to stand warm in the winter time is a base layer that repels water. Yeah. Um, something well, as simple, breeze, as simple right? as a, I like to wear like they have like silk underwear. You know, it's very lightweight. 
Right. But right. it wicks away moisture and um, it does keep you very warm. So that, that's a good first Absolutely. layer to put on. Yep. You know, uh, but then, you know, just getting thin layers and not worrying about so much as one huge bulky coat. But, um, you know, like right now I've got uh, two fleece layers and a windproof, waterproof layer on the outside. Now, that's not enough for this weather, but also have, you know, stocking cap, a full face mask. Yeah. Uh, got in the truck this morning and grabbed the steering wheel and went, oh, boy, that's cold because it was f minus four. Right. Uh, and I uh, pulled out my wool mittens and put them on and I was hunky dory for the drive here. So all all of the three miles of flat no curves driving. So, right. um, you know, but if you're doing, I think I know if you're doing prepared, astrophotography, but... the cameras love, I mean, you know, your cameras already cooled down because it's cold outside, you know, so that right. makes, um, right. you know, a less noisy image. Um, but, but the other side of the coin is your batteries. You just, just your breath fogs up the eyepiece, you know, what, what, yep. have, what have you oh. tried to, yeah. um, to augment that? Uh, Masks make it worse. Um, you know, I've had trouble with, I mean, wearing a mask with glasses, it just fogs them up. And, you know, you got a mask here and it gets, you look in with your left eye and that little puff of air comes out uh, yeah. and it hits the eyepiece. That little puff of air is, you know, 100% humidity uh, coming out of your body and boom, yeah. it freezes. Um, right. Ed Gunther uh, said he's lost eyelashes. Uh, freezing to his eyepieces um last you mean last, like you're looking you know, and your eyelashes actually freeze to the yeah he touches glass and That's you know cold. they have enough moisture on them they touch the glass and freeze <laughs> he lives almost to montreal i think plattsburgh new york like 60 uh, miles south of, of montreal which yeah. he calls the great montreal nebula from the sky yeah. glow right. um but but he loves using the uh the original tele original optical astronomical device i think i've said this before the uh eyeball mark one um he loves just looking up at the sky but when he looks in the telescope sure. and he said eyelashes freeze to the eyepiece before there's not much you can do now one thing I i've have... done to try and fight it is uh hand warmers you know the disposable hand warmers hand you get warmers is a good idea and they're not very expensive yeah. and what i do is i will use painter's tape you know the 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 blue or green painter's tape okay which doesn't leave re leave residue and i will tape those around the lens so the heat's rising uh to stuff, try and right? keep the eyepiece sir this stuff right here i can't see the screen oh you can't see the screen okay so, <laughs> well they can nope <laughs> yeah. uh, they can't it's, so i'm assuming painters that you, tape. and uh it works yeah great. painter's tape it, it works great now the, the first couple of times I tried it, I, I wasn't thinking and I taped up almost the entire part of the hand warmer. And yeah. then I realized they wouldn't do anything. Well, those things have to be able to get oxygen to heat up because basically it's just rapid oxidation. It's rusting and creating heat. Um, so you have to have it taped so that the, the packet does get oxygen. And it, that takes a little bit of work to try and figure out how to do it on an eyepiece or or around the perimeter of a dew shield or something like that. But uh, those things have proven effective to me in mm. uh, uh, keeping, helping fight that um, uh, moisture on the eyepiece. But, you know, at, at zero degrees, uh, you know, once you get moisture on an eyepiece, it's going to be frozen on there without some serious work. And years ago, I bought a tiny little miniature like one fifth or one eighth scale hair dryer that okay. runs off a 12 volt battery. And so oh, you wow. plug it in and go, <laughs> and it nuke Like for a bar. I mean, literally th to... It's almost, it's, it's a little bit bigger than that, but I mean, literally it's about that big. It's just a tiny little miniature hair dryer. And okay. I don't know. All right. I don't and remember where I got it from. This? But, I mean, or yes. you just found it. Yeah. No, I think, I, I think it was a saw it in a, magazine article or somewhere i'll bring it in scott and show it to you for um, astronomy. it's a cute okay. little thing all right yeah you have to it, show it i on think the it's show. for astronomy <laughs> yeah i'll bring it in it's a cute okay. little thing we'll do it yeah, yeah. we should whatever. have we should have like a show to talk about how to deal with dew you know what do you do with dew right but um 
but first off, you know, and really important is that you got to be warm out there, you know, because you're not moving around. Yeah. You're, you're staying right. stationary by your telescope. Uh, you know, uh, the biggest workout you're going to get is lifting up uh, a hot mug of coffee or something. So um, yeah. it does help to get up and walk around. You know, they'll get your blood pumping and stuff like that. Uh, uh, you got to keep your core warm. You got to keep your extremities warm, you know. Uh, I have found just wearing a cap and putting like uh, uh, one of those heat, heating uh, hand warmer things in the cap itself and then just pulling it down it can make a world of difference, you know. So, uh, you know, you know in, you this, warm, in this, in this with your feet and the feet, feet, yep. feet, 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 because people tend to over or underestimate how cold their feet are going to get. Yeah. Once somebody's feet gets cold, Oh, they're done. They're done. There's no way to get. Yeah. You're done. There's no way to get warmed up. Very uh, hard. Without going, it takes time to warm up your feet because there's the blood flows. There's not a huge volume of blood going through there. And it's very difficult. So it, you know, when I go out, you know, in weather like this, I'm thinking about my feet first and foremost. I right. don't want them to get cold, but likewise, I don't want them to get real hot either because then they're going to get clammy and damp and and now you're having to deal with uh uh you know when you quit moving that yeah. that, that water freezes now, i saw somebody that was winter camping was on a youtube video and they put plastic bags over their socks and then put their foot into their boot oh, so, so their that their feet boot wouldn't get wet no, so their boot wouldn't get wet. So that because the moisture in their in their boot uh, got into the leather, into the surfaces, and then when they took it off at night to get in the sleeping bag, it froze solid, and the thing was a oh. solid block of ice. And so they were using it. How and we're talking about like back on if it's frozen solid. I I don't know. You know. Correct. These are these are like, I mean, Canadians. You know, up in the you know, whereas you know, in the Yukon. up in the hard north. <laughs> where it was brutal cold. And I thought that was a brilliant trick uh, mm. to, to uh, keep moisture out of your boots. We don't face that here, but like once every, what, 10 years, Scott? Today you would. This cold. It's cold out there. <laughs> Today yeah. you would, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I, I generally love these cold nights like this, Scott, because, man, the, the sky is almost always when it's this cold are beautiful and clear. That's true. And, you know, they look like, black velvet you know with diamonds scattered across it it's true too. but uh this is a storm full of clouds uh yes it is that's right it's going to be cloudy for a while uh yep. cameron gillis says he he says right scott heat escapes from the head like chimney uh so uh so uh, take mm -hmm. the winter hat yeah all right yeah. so we got some comments here maybe some good advice uh we always get good advice from our group here um, it's a great group of people. Yep. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Clear Light Fifty Eight says it's warmer here north of Boston than it is there in in uh, in, um, in Arkansas. It's true. It, it got down below zero last night. Um, mm -hmm. And Scott, did you spend the night in in Barbara Jean? Oh yeah, sure. So yep. what was the temperature there? In the in what the trailer was. Oh no, it's warm yeah. in there. You know. Yeah. I I have uh, I have a fireplace in there, and I've got um, you know if I get chilly, I got uh, you know electric blanket. You know, so I'm good. I'm yeah. good. I can see Barbara Jean, and she has a uh, a beautiful drape of snow over her. Right oh yeah, now. I'll have to take a picture yeah. of it and post it. Yeah, so it it's is very pretty. pretty. Very pretty. Looking. It is. Um, Pekka says, thanks Scott about blood pressure, forgotten to measure mine tonight. That's right. Um, but, uh, oh, okay. Blood, hey, things, Scott, Scott yes. pills, pills. If, if you normally take your pills at nine o'clock yeah, and you're going to go out till midnight or one, yes. you need to take your pills with you and take your pills oh, at the normal course. time. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, oh, you need to take an any kind of medicines that you normally take. If you're going out, you know, to a dark sky site, right. you should have your medication, you know, just, just in case, you know, if you don't need it, you yeah. don't need it. Okay. But if you're on right. a regimen, then yeah, you need to take it. 
And one of the things I learned is that um, some people take their, uh, if, they're, if they have a blood pressure thing going on, they like to take their uh, pills in the morning. I've read that um, if you take your pills at night, I'm, I'm not being a doctor here. This is just what I read. You can check up on it yourself. <laughs> but um, I've read that, um, uh, you know, uh, people that have hypertension and stuff are prone to heart attack. Okay. Stargazing is good for this. It lowers your blood pressure. Okay. It lowers your anxiety level. All right. So you want to be, you want to be doing a lot of stargazing. Um, but uh, unless uh, of course, Unless, of course, your tracking's not working, in which case it's going to blow your blood pressure through the roof. You need to know how to switch <laughs> so that you're not getting yourself all worked up. Okay. The idea is that you're not yes. worked up. But, uh, you know, if, if little things bother you, um, you need to learn how to deal with that stuff. But the point I was going to make about the medicine uh, for blood pressure, they say that if you take it at night before you go to sleep, you have something like uh, almost 50% better chance of not getting a heart attack. Okay. So that's, uh, so that's a, a little tip that you guys can check up on your own. Okay. I, I certainly am not a doctor and I don't know, but, you know, I, I don't know if that's absolutely true or not, but that's what I've heard. And that's what I do. So. And you didn't even sleep at a holiday Inn express last night. I didn't No. <laughs> yep. Somebody wants to give me a PhD right here in the show and that's great. But, um, Anyhow, um, let's see. Okay, let's let's look at some of the comments here. We have a nice group as we normally do. Um, Harold Lock says frostbite's easy to get. Yes, it is. So you need to you need to keep your extremities warm. Uh, and let's see. Five C's of survival, cutting tool, combustion device, cordage, container, and cover. Uh, yep. A la tarp or tent. Okay, right. so what's, uh, that, that reminds me, you know, this is another thing I bring out to make my observing um, more convenient is I do set up my telescopes on a, on either like, uh, sometimes I use indoor, outdoor carpet. I've used AstroTurf, okay. I kind of like the AstroTurf because if you drop a little screw, it usually gets caught in the AstroTurf little leaves there, you know, the, the uh, blades. That it doesn't bounce. Grass, you know. Um, but it keeps, you know, if, if you are, if it's summertime, okay, uh, you, can, you can lay this tarp over the ground where you're going to be and you won't have to worry about bugs or ants crawling up your legs, uh, you know, and if you do lose something like a set screw or something like that, it's much, much easier to find, uh, it keeps your equipment cleaner, you know, and, and, uh, so we always recommend a tarp, even if you're going to use the two room observatory tent, I'm going to recommend you go down to Harbor Freight or your favorite hardware store and buy a nice, uh, a nice tarp that's going to, you know, cover the entire ground where you're going to be observing. Um, I just think it's a... Right you know, a, a great thing to have. Um. <laughs> well, you know, like he, like he said, the, th the five C's, you know, you don't want to think about a survival situation. And, you know, a lot of people don't ever think about it, but they're always the same route. They know exactly where they're going. But like, if I was going out to Hobbs state park, you know, there's some hollows that I could run off in and, and, and nobody see me and I'll be down in there for two or three days. And, hmm. you know, if I'm in my vehicle and, and incapacitated and can't get up, you know, what are you going to do? Your cell phone's now in the back seat. You can't get unbuckled. You know, we, you hate to talk about those things, but you need to. And, you know, you've got to be prepared to take care of yourself for a period of time. And like he said, the five C's, you know, I've always used the rule of three is one and one is none. So if you've got three of something very quickly in a survival situation, you're going to have one. And if you go out there with like one way to start a fire very quickly, you're not going to be able to start a fire. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's about being prepared. I'm a boy scout. I'm an Eagle scout. Be I'm prepared. boy scout too. Yeah. Being prepared is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I was told to invest in a snowmobile suit. That could be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. 
That could be a good idea. You know, there's another kind of suit that you could look at. A friend of mine used to sell um, uh, some um, uh, a brand called Refrigerware. And this is these are the kind of suits that people that work in meat lockers, you know, where it's always frozen. Uh, they wear these mm-hmm. suits and they stay warm. You know, there's also the, a kind of a mask that you can, you know, it looks like a baklava or I, I don't know, you know, the face mask that goes over your entire face. But it has built into it. it I think it's like steel wool or something. And as you breathe Copper. out, OK, warm air gets trapped in that that steel wool. And then as you breathe back in, you're not breathing in ice cold air. OK, so you're not in you're not filling your lungs with, uh, you know, super cold air and you stay warmer. You know, so this is this is something else that I uh, had one of those. You had one. I, I had I, one of those. One, one time I lost it. Uh, a trade yeah. show. It, yeah. the, you, you breathed right here. Well, you breathe here, but the air came in, in and out back here. So okay. this one had copper in it. And so it was right. against your skin. And so that sucking the air in warmed up from the breath going out and from the heat of your skin. And it made a huge difference. But I, I have no idea where it is. I haven't seen it in years. Yeah. But it was a when, it worked. When I tried one yeah. out, they had a they had a uh, a trailer that was a refrigerated trailer. It was inside the trade show, and when you went in there, you were effectively like a, I don't know ten below zero or something like that. It was pretty cold, you know. And so you know you didn't. I, I just went in with like regular clothes, uh, no jacket, and just wearing that, uh, I was able to sit in there for quite a while, you know and uh, not really feel very cold. So that, that's another good thing to think about. But, um, and then the other thing that you gotta bring is you gotta bring flashlights, uh, red and white flashlights. You need, um, you, you need uh, you know, something to snack on um, and, um, you know, ways to communicate, uh, you know, so uh, that when you A were- A charged up cell phone. Uh, yeah. An extra, an extra power for your cell phone. So Mm -hmm. all those things. And then what do you do before you even leave? You do a walk around of your car. You check out your tires. You, you, uh, you make sure your car can handle the trip. You know, Uh, I've been to many star parties where people drove out there and their tires were not right. And uh, you know, they, they just thought they could do it and head out there and come back. No problem. You know, uh, their battery, maybe their car battery wasn't that good. You know, you don't want to be going out to a, a uh, distant dark sky site without a um, good vehicle, you know, and it doesn't have to be a brand new vehicle, but it's got to be working correctly. So. And Scott, you said, what's the first thing you do before you leave? Well, sometime before you leave, you tell somebody, if you're going, especially if you're going by yourself, you tell somebody where you're going and then you actually go there. And you tell them oh, you don't change your plan. <laughs> That's right. And if you change your plan, I there's been cases where people said I, I when I was in the newspaper business years ago, there was a guy told people he was going to one place and on the way he changed his mind because the wind changed direction and he went opposite direction and mm-hmm. it took three days for him to find him. He was still alive, but he was wow. not in good shape. And uh, it's it's a it was a brutal story. And they fa- they went right to where it was supposed to be, nothing. And uh, if you leave an itinerary, itinerary by where you're going, go there. If you change it, you should have just like left a note. You know, I'm going this way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Anything. Yeah. Keep people informed. That's true. Um, and and it, you know, I always recommend going and observing with a buddy. You know, the buddy system works great. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, especially if you are going out with like a couple of vehicles, that's always a good thing too, you know, cause you might need to jump for your car. You might need to go get, uh, a tire repair. Do you might, I mean, people do, they run out of gas and all kinds of stuff like that. So you want to, you want to make sure king. that you got a full tank, you got the right amount of oil, you've got, uh, you got all the right stuff, you know, so. Because you're going Cash on an king. expedition, you know, and uh, you need to you need to pretend that uh, you know that maybe something could go wrong, and you need to be 
ready for it. So, yep. um, and cash is king. And cash is king. <laughs> yep. Just bring you can get a lot, lot done with cash. cash. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you should probably bring a little bit of cash. Um. So we mentioned uh, before the st- show got really started that today is Galileo's birthday. Um, happy birthday, Galileo. Thank you for all you did. I think Galileo probably was the first uh, uh, outreach guy. You know, he uh, was in Florence uh, and he, uh, he gave uh, star parties for lawyers, for, you know, a lot of influential people. But I think he did some stuff for the public as well. So um, uh, you know, he wanted to show people, uh, you know, how well his telescope worked. Um, he had developed, uh, the telescope mostly for military purposes, but, uh, he was very interested in astronomy and demonstrated its, you know, its higher magnification by looking at the moon and planets with it. Um, and, uh, you know, he was a scientist and an astronomer as well. So, uh, but uh, his his first goal was to try to sell his more powerful telescope to the uh, to the government, and um, uh, you know he opened up the whole world, uh, the whole universe. Uh, you know the, the way that we view the universe had changed with this small telescope. Uh, what else is happening tomorrow? Uh, we have our global star party. This will be the thirty second global star party. So if you're uh, interested in joining us, we will have our after party. Uh, Kent Martz will be, uh, uh, will be available to uh, take your um, login and uh, uh, you'll go into a waiting room and he'll check your audio and video and then give you the login for the Global Star Party, which you can, you can show images through your telescope or show us the latest image that you've taken or tell us, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, your, your astronomy adventure. So that, you know, that's all good. And um, so we get with global star. No politics. What's that? No politics. No politics. No, no, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. Except the politics of light pollution. You can talk yeah, about we, that. We keep religion and politics out <laughs> of the global star party. Right. There are places for that, you know, and it's all well and good, but uh, this is a this is an astronomy uh, star party event, so that's the way it is. Uh, but uh, also on the 16th, Gerard Kuiper discovers the moon of Uranus called Miranda. So, and then we've got is, we have is, what three is, spacecraft. Scott, What's that, Scott? Is he the the person that the Kuiper belt is named after? I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. But I don't know yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, pretty sure that's right. We have three spacecraft, uh, at Mars right now. So that's, that's cool. You know, and, uh, uh, we have, I think it is the, isn't it on the 16th that, uh, Thursday at three is it Thursday. It's Thursday at three 54 yeah. will be the return message of touchdown and success. 354 central time. I think it is. Oh my gosh. So okay. uh, Clint, Clint and Catherine and I are going to be doing a live presentation and Trey on uh, uh through for NWA dot space. Right. Uh, doing a live broadcast at that point. That's really but, cool. Uh, yeah. It takes, it's 11 minutes and 21 seconds light time right now. Light, light speed away. So it, it'll touch down. And then we won't know it for 11 and a half minutes. Right. So, you know, there's that, that, that agonizing delay after the so-called seven minutes of terror. So, right. Yeah. You know, so. and this is, it's, it's pretty the cool. I was reading. This thing, you've seen, you've probably saw some of the visualizations that they've done where, you know, they come down, uh, there's like a heat shield that pops off and then they've, you know, they, they're, a parachute comes out and uh, and then the parachute pulls away and then they've got, you know, jets that are hovering the rover as it's descending down. And as soon as it touches the ground, these, I guess, four exploding bolts go off or something and the whole thing takes off and flies away and we're left with our rover ready to go explore. So, 
So, so some real cool technology they have is bef- they, they've the, uh, the landing ellipse is 300 times smaller than Sojourner was because this um, lander has, I don't remember the technical name for it, but before the parachute deploys, it's taking continuous, it's autonomous AI basically, it's taking continuously taking pictures and evaluating where it is and what speed it's going and will release its own parachute at the time it judges is the precise time to hit exactly where they want. Yeah. And then once that happens, then um, there is then a new system takes over and it's a hazardous avoidance system. And again, comparing itself to like 10 pictures a second, it will determine where the best place to land is and then steer it to that spot and land in this as close to the pre-selected spot as it can get while yeah. avoiding hazards. And it's pretty cool to read about. It was, it was very impressive to read about yesterday. Yeah. This whole mission from uh, perseverance. I mean, it's just so amazing. They've got the helicopter that will be flying around. They've got, uh, mm-hmm. you know, sample return mission. They've got, uh, basically a whole laboratory on board uh, the, um, you know, the rover to try to determine if we got something that will give uh, clues that there's life. And they have, they are landing in a place where, you know, a very good chance, you know, if life exists, this is a good spot to go look for it. So, so so actually, Scott, I was, I was surprised because that's what I thought they have picked this spot because they this mission is not to look for current life. It's to look for signs of historic life. That's right. And they've identified areas where they think life may currently exist. And these missions are staying away from those places because they don't want to, because life could exist there. They don't want to have a, a, a terrestrial microbe grow there and then we show up at that spot in five more years and go, oh, oh you look, mean life. One of our microbes, Earth's microbes. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yes. So they're taking very, you know, t- precautions to stay away from those sensitive areas. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was pretty cool. I spent probably an hour and a half reading up yesterday. And uh, um, it's very cool, you know, what, what they have going on. I look, It's going to be interesting to see how well the helicopter works. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like yeah, drones that's flying cool. anyways. And so the idea that there's going to be this little drone, this the dr- giant blades on it too, because the air's thin, you know, so they need uh, yeah. they need to be able to, well, you know, get a lot of, uh, you know, torque on the wind there. So uh, what else is going on this week? We have um, Clyde Tombo. You remember we had our event uh, with um, Astronomy Magazine and we celebrated the 115th birthday of Clyde Tomba. Well, on the 18th of February is also the day that uh, Clyde discovered Pluto. So there, there we go. You know, that was in 1930. Uh, you did that at Lowell Observatory. Um, and then on Friday, the 19th, uh, Nicholas, Cop- Nicholas Copernicus was born in 1473. And then on Saturday, we've got uh, the anniversary of John Glenn um, you know, uh, first American uh, in orbit. So that's uh, that happened in 1962. So very busy, this is a big week. very um, uh, astronomy rich and space exploration rich uh, week. And um, you know, so hope you guys watch the uh, Global Star Party tomorrow. Tonight, I am giving a live presentation to um, uh, an astronomy club in Chile. Uh, they've invited me to give a presentation. And the thing I want to talk about, which I kind of talk about a little bit on these shows, is why astronomy is good for you. You know, how, how you know, the power of, uh, of stargazing, you know, and why that's good for, you know, uh, you know, if you have anxiety, if you have uh, depression, if you have, uh, you know, uh, anything that ails you, or if you have nothing that ails you, people love to be out under the stars and, and uh, it's a recharge, it's rejuvenation. Um, It does many of the same things for you as being, uh, you know, uh, you know, 
the Japanese do forest bathing, where they go out into the forest to uh, be amongst the trees. And they've done some uh, heavy duty studies on that and found that there are uh, aerosols that come from the trees that uh, uh, actually have health benefits. And some of them actually prevent cancer. So that's uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, if you watch some documentaries on trees, well, I argue that astronomy uh, also does many great things for you too, including, uh, you know, if you're a good observer and you learn to relax while concentrating at the eyepiece, but relaxing so you can see more, you kind of go into this meditative flow, you know, and that is, that is really excellent. So if you had, you've had trouble meditating before, or you don't think that you can meditate, most amateur astronomers that do stargazing uh, uh, actually get into the same state. And um, so, and we, you know, you can read all about uh, the benefits of meditation, uh, but, uh, um, you know, I found that uh, many astronomers benefit from it. I've heard many amazing stories, some of them on this show, um, of people's lives have been changed through astronomy. So uh, the power of stargazing is my talk tonight. If you'd like to tune in, you can go to astronomy, uh, excuse me, to explorescientific.com forward slash live. You'll see our calendar and there's a link to the YouTube page where it's gonna be broadcast. So uh, we're not broadcasting ourselves. It's the, uh, it's the group down in Chile that's doing it. But, uh, Anyways, hey Scott, why, that's hey Scott, a good why don't you talk about where I'm sitting? Why don't you talk about where I'm sitting and what we're doing here? Well, uh, you are in our new studio, and um, what well, um, a studio! Wow, <laughs> you're in a studio. <laughs> We've done so many videos here at Explore Scientific because of the pandemic. Uh, we wanted to stay in touch with people. Um, so we have, we built out, uh, maybe you can turn the camera a little bit, uh, Kent, so they can sure, see I can what do the studio that. looks like. Yep. This is a new studio. We just built it out uh, last week, I think. We, yeah, we had been using the store and the, the store was continuously yep. being, you know, torn up and, you know, customers come in, everything was shoved up out of the way. And so yeah. we, we had this area that we use for, you know, big meetings and stuff and, you know, our, our company meals and things. And it, we use these uh, movable walls for our trade shows and uh, are going to put in some additional soundproofing, but it's turned into a pretty darn good studio. Let me just yeah. zoom, zoom out a little bit. That's as far as it goes. So, you know, over here, we've got a door and then here we go. We're just going to slowly zoom around. We got yeah, so we have TV different um, you know, sets. We got four sets. And the different things we have that we four do. sets. Yeah. So that's this all is the, just uh, a general STEM, set right here. The STEM products that we offer. Yeah. And then another Explore Scientific one for for other products. And then yeah, bringing back over here is the studio. Health and brand. Yep, for sports optics. And then you know we've got a. Uh, we got mission control, control there center. to do the. Yep, mission control right here. Stuff. Yeah. And there's, there's a store through those windows, but right. Well, that's it right there. Yeah. It's very useful. Yeah. It's really been nice to have this. So we didn't have to keep tearing up, taking down, setting up, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was a lot of work on the guy that does the video, uh, Paul Newton, who, who, who really works hard at, at, at his craft. And, um, you know, it was hard on him because you'd have to take down these backstops and just rip them down, Velcroed up, and then we'd have to put the new ones up. And um, it's really been functional for him, you know, because we now we can just switch between four different sets. We don't have to change the sets. It's really nice. Yeah. It's really nice. And I do everything. I usually do my shows from um, from my office. So, you know. Which is right over there about 24 feet. <laughs> That's right. Yep. So, in fact, if he opens the door, we'll get a little bit of feedback. Yeah, you get feedback. That's right. That's right. Right. But, uh, you know, we've got, uh, you know, this this week is just a tremendous week. And um, so a good time to uh, get online and check everything out. Um, 
I don't know if we'll be able to see this or not, but it says Saturn is four degrees north of Mercury on the 23rd. And, um, you know, it gets relatively quiet as far as uh, astronomical events go in this, uh, the, the following week, but, um, you know, it always picks up again. The other thing I wanted to announce is that the, the Northeast Astronomy Forum is gonna be held virtually. Uh, they did it last year, they're doing it again this year, and that's gonna happen on April 10th. Um, the time on that I think is like um, seven or eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'll get the exact time on the schedule uh, that you'll see on our, on our Explorer uh, scientific forward slash live page. In fact, I think I have it up there right now. So uh, you can check it out there. Um, and I'm currently linking to their YouTube channel where they broadcast last time. So uh, the, um, uh, the attendance on that is, uh, I think, going to be free. Um, uh, but uh, you can also look at the uh, NEF Expo. It's called NEF Expo, N-E-A-F Expo uh, website uh, for updates. I, they are still yet to update from their 2020 event, which they canceled. But um, they do have like a little spinner announcement that the 2021 event is happening on April 10th. So, um, and um, what else? What other events do you know about, Kent? How about Texas Star Party? Anything? Haven't heard. Haven't heard. Haven't heard. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, Texas Star Party could come off because they have so much room. True. You know, but. And they're on a private, they're not in a state park, they're on a private, private you know, facility. Ranch. Yeah. So Rude a ranch. private ranch. So that may facilitate it happening. You know, it depends on how much Texas has not been a really strong mask enforcement state. And so I think the Texas Star Party may happen because of that. You know, uh, now, the question I, is I, people I did, I did want to go or not. I did their website. Um, there's something about uh, they're going to have a lottery uh, to get in. Uh, I know that there won't be any vendors there. So, you know, this will be a pure observing event um, that's going up. But, uh, and then what else? So, uh, the Starmus event, uh, which we've been invited to, uh, we'll be hearing, I guess, in the next week or so, whether or not that's actually going to happen. Starmus is going to be held in Armenia. Uh, so if you've never visited Armenia and you're inclined to travel, uh, hopefully that you've already had your vaccine by that time, uh, you know, that should be an amazing event as well. That was, uh, uh, that event was uh, founded by Brian May of Queen and uh, Stephen Hawking and uh, Garrick Israelian and a couple of other people. Uh, I know that uh, David Eicher from Astronomy Magazine is also very involved in this. So, um, but they always put it together an amazing event. And we are, Explore Scientific is supposed to be the official star party um, uh, company there. So we will, um, you know, it, that looks like it may happen. Also, we have the, uh, the Astronomical League, the Alcon Convention, uh, which will happen uh, this summer. So you, you can see on our calendar when all the Astronomical League live events will happen. Explore Scientific will be also broadcasting. Whether they, whether they have a live in-person event or not, we will, have, um, uh, we will be broadcasting uh, the Alcon event. So, and uh, I think that's all that comes to mind for right now, but it's a lot, so. Backpack, $99. Or seventy nine if you're an Explorer Alliance seventy nine platinum member absolutely or it's, paid member. It's not up on the website yet. Oh, you know we didn't talk about how to buy it. You know how do you, buy, how you, you buy it if you're a member? How do you buy it if you're a member? You send an email to Explore Alliance at explorescientific dot com. I'm sure Scott will put that in the chat right now. I'm doing that Explore right now. Explore Alliance at explorescientific.com, send an email, say, you know, something about backpack in the, in the uh, subject line and that you want to buy the backpack for the EA price of uh, 
Yep. And uh, we'll make sure you're you're an EA member. If you're not, we can get you signed up and get everything taken care of. Now, yep. it may be a little bit slow for a week or so because of everybody being out. And I really don't think we'll see much staff here all week. Basically, there's been two people in the building since about 11 o'clock, and it's been Scott and I. Uh, I think the total we had was four or five people at one point, and everybody just went home. Uh, so it may be next week before we uh, can get some things going, but we'll take care of you. So uh, times like this, patience is key. Yes. You know, right. we're, with, with so many people out um, for various reasons, you know, so. Uh, but yeah, that's how you take get it. Hopefully, uh, I'll be working the next few days to get it up on the website because uh, uh, it's not up on the website yet. But it'll get up there, and we can take care of you. It'll be easy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I guess Martin Eastburn leaves us with some final advice. He says anti fog spray for glasses at Amazon. So uh, he put up a link, I think, somewhere, or at least check it out there. Cool. Um, you guys all have a great evening. Stay warm out there because it's cold in a lot of part of the, uh, the United States right now. If you're watching from where it's warm, you know, God bless you. It's great. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scott, is there a chance to stream the star parties in high definition? Jeff, I don't think so. Uh, not with, with the equipment that we have right now. When we go to high, if you broadcast a high def, you run into some problems where, um, you know, the, the people logging in on Zoom, they don't, you know, it's dependent on their login, you know, uh, and a lot of people don't have super high speed connections. Uh, here at Explore Scientific, we have about 200 up and 200 down. Um, and uh, so that becomes a problem. You can see if you look at the Winter Star Party uh, program, and uh, I'll give you the link for that. Um, that was recorded in high def, um, but the entire website, that was not done live. That was done pre-recorded. Um, uh, but you, you, know, you, can, you can upload high def, but streaming high def is a different thing. You know? so, but um, we use the technology we got, okay? So- uh, Yeah, but you've, you've now, Pekka, he's now planted a seed. <laughs> That's He's right. I planted a seed in your mind. <laughs> you trust me. I'll take advantage of it when I can get it. Um, Ken, yeah, how will. do people get the uh, login for um, the the waiting room tomorrow? Uh, you'll share that in the meeting. Um, okay. It's oh, a, that's it's right. A clickable link. That's right. It's a clickable link. Yeah. yeah. And so you can click into it, and you go into Kent's waiting room. I think it's the name of it, and. Uh, uh, once you get in, I'll check your sound and your uh, video, make sure everything's up to, you know, tolerable standard, and then uh, ask you what you're going to talk about, and then I will share with each individual person the uh, login to Scott's room, yeah. and then you log in, you leave Kent's waiting room, and then you will log into Scott's room and... He'll yeah, let you, you, won't, you won't be in a waiting room when you get to, to us. You go straight on in your live at that point. Uh, one of the things right. that um, some people are confused about uh, of logging into the uh, Global Star Party is they, I've had people log in and just like hang out, okay? Uh, this is, you know, going on to Global Star Party is, is like going on to a TED Talk. We don't let people just hang out backstage. You, you come on, uh, you are going to have to participate. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you just want to hang out, uh, you, can, you can hang out at any of the uh, social media channels that we're on, uh, including the one you're watching right now. Um, but if you want to participate, you got something to share. You know, this is an astronomy outreach event uh, that we do. And um, so love to have you. Uh, uh, but uh, you got to share. So, Scott, if somebody wanted to play music or uh, read a poem or something, yeah, if it's original music, that? they can't they can't play pre recorded music because um, you know that you, that you run into copyright problems. Okay, we're not a, right. we're not a broadcaster of copyrighted music like that. 
um, or video even. Uh, if it's not yours, uh, you can't do it. But if you are a musician, you know, and love the stars and you got something that uh, uh, evokes, um, you know, harmony with uh, <laughs> stargazing somehow, it so, doesn't even have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be a song about stargazing, but uh, uh, we've had people so, perform live things, uh, which has been very nice. Uh, poetry is always welcome. Uh, you know, astronomy related poetry is cool. Um, so anyhow. So if somebody wanted to play Stairway to Heaven, they could. They just can't. If they're, if they're the ones playing it, yes. But they right. want to if play it's on Led their guitar, Stairway to Heaven, or that really awesome rendition by Heart, uh, um, you know, Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. Uh, that's a no. What will happen is the whole. <laughs> what will happen is the whole broadcast gets blocked, and you know, at least yeah, that get chunk of it gets blocked. Two hundred countries, so we just don't we don't yeah. allow it. So, right. Well, good. And Chris, thank you very much for the nice comments. In fact, all of you, thank you for so much for watching. Um, you guys keep looking up and I got to get ready for the next program. So take care and we'll talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.